Hello, my name is Sarah. Oh God, we're flying everywhere. Sorry. <laughs> my name is Sarah, and this is another video on Space Place and Southern Grace YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us today. I am back in the car on another adventure with my lovely companion, Alan, who celebrated his 31st birthday this week. So we are doing something fun. We are headed up to Louisville, Kentucky, which is about two hours from our house, and we are going to go to the Rabbit Hole Distillery today. They make bourbon, gin, among other spirits, and we're going to make a tour, do some tasting, see their process, and learn more about this fabulous drink from our state. Stay tuned. Find the distillery at 711 East Jefferson Street in Louisville, Kentucky. As you can tell by my voice here, I'm recording most of the sound to this video as a voiceover because it is extremely, extremely loud in a distillery. The first thing I notice in Rabbit Hole is immediately how beautiful and modern the space is. You enter the gift shop immediately from Jefferson Street and see some of the major functions of the distilling process, such as the map out to fermentation through the barreling process as it goes to bottles. Adam led our tour today. My name's Adam Edwards. I'm the digital brand ambassador for Rabbit Hole Distillery. And uh, you know, look at the distillery, have a drink, taste through our products, we enjoy ourselves today. One really neat feature right when you walk in the door is this glass floor showing grain moving under you as you walk into the distillery. Everyone always wants to step over. Oh, trust me, you told me. We're all fine. <laughs> <laughs> this literal hole at Rabbit Hole is where the distillery is under construction to expand their production by up to 30%. From here, we moved inside to see the real dirty details of how Rabbit Hole bourbon is made. Absolutely love this quote on the wall inside. That is from Rabbit Hole's founder, Kaveh. It says, chemistry happens when passion and purpose align. And his mark on the distillery and his passion for the craft is truly evident throughout the design of the building. This is actually the closest I've been to a functioning copper still. It's a column made fully of copper that's used in the bourbon distillation process. From here, we moved on to the cookers and the fermenting stage of the bourbon making process. At this point, yeast is added and turns cooked grains into distiller's beer. From here, you can see the giant tanks or chambers where the fermentation process is happening over several hours and days. At this point in the fermentation process, you can see bubbles form and pop as the mixture responds to movement in the tank. You gonna yeah. taste it? What's the taste? Yeah, that one, that one tastes a lot better. Sure. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 In case you are wondering, it is safe to try the mixture at this point in the process, but FY, it's pretty gross. Oh, there, there we go. go. <laughs> Getting to know the behind the scenes process of making bourbon is really special to me, not only as a Kentuckian, but because my full-time job centers around agriculture production. Next, we got to go somewhere pretty special behind the scenes so we could see where spent grain goes after production happens. Spent grain is a food waste or byproduct and the leftover malt after the mash has extracted most of the sugars, proteins, and nutrients it can use for the bourbon. When we go through these doors, you're about to see one of my absolute favorite views in a bourbon distillery because it shows the heart of production and all the details that go into making each barrel. Oh, I see the grades. Okay. There we go. This, there's a grate inside of here. Mm -hmm. This is actually where we're oh, gonna yeah. start um, filtering it out. So thick stillage is gonna make it appear. No stillage mm -hmm. here, light stillage there, like actual thin stillage there. So the over through here, yeah. it has to go to that sieve and parse this out. That's awesome. Here's a quick look at some raw grains. This is honey malted barley before it's used for the mash to make bourbon. 
It wouldn't be a true Kentucky bourbon tour without trying a little bit of white lightning. White lightning is a colloquial term for grain alcohol. It's very high proof made from corn before bourbon goes into barrels for aging and where it gets the color and flavor we're used to. This one specifically is 138 proof. Talk about potent. The distillery architecture is one of the most impressive features of Rabbit Hole. As you climb stairs and go higher and higher in the building, you can see more stages in the process from a bird's eye view. Throughout the distillery, you can see examples of art that really speak to the founders' pride for American and Kentucky heritage. Even though Rabbit Hole is fairly new to the Kentucky bourbon scene, homage is paid to historical bourbon brands throughout the distillery. One of my favorite parts of wrapping up this tour was ending at Overlook, the bar and event space that Rabbit Hole offers the Louisville community. As its name suggests, Overlook has an incredible view of the Louisville skyline and was the perfect place to wrap up our tour with a tasting. Despite being a new brand, I really love Rabbit Hole's attention to detail in their bottle design as well as their color scheme for all of their labels. The bottles are gorgeous and look timeless and classic on a shelf. Hey, I'm Matt. I'm the junior marketer at Rabbit Hole Distillery and we're about to sit down for our tasting. I absolutely loved the thorough tasting we experienced. We walked through each of the bourbons that Rabbit Hole produces as well as their gin. While we were there, we tried the four bourbons, which are Cave Hill, High Gold, Derringer, and Boxer Grail, and we tried the Bespoke Gin. My favorite of the bourbons by far was Cave Hill. It had a very smooth finish, no bite on the back end, and was very easy to drink. My least favorite of all the options was Derringer because it's finished in cherry cask. It's not for me with its nutty cherry finishes in the tasting notes. I was most overwhelmed and pleasantly surprised by the bespoke gin. Historically, gin has not been for me. I don't love the wintry pine coney taste. It reminds me of Christmas and not what I want for a fresh, exciting drink. But this one did not have the same bite and the same aggressiveness of pine cones that I'm used to. It had the same notes as dill as what I expected and was very floral, but delicious on the back end. Ultimately, we had an incredible time at our experience at Rabbit Hole. I can't recommend enough for you to pick up a bottle, stop by the distillery if you find yourself in Louisville, or schedule a tour for the first time in over a year. Cheers, y'all!